Hi, this is a continuation of my earlier videos on motion tracking technology. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at why IME tracking is really hard to do in certain situations. For example, the gym. I'm a real gym junkie. If I haven't been to the gym at least five times in a week, then there's something really wrong. But I also love technology. What would be really nice if some technology, some usable technology, could be put into the gym? This is one of my goals, but I found some technology just really isn't up to it. So to show you what I mean, I took an IMU suit into a real world scenario. So a good buddy of mine has a gym called Clean Shred out at Castle Hill. So I've come along because I wanted to see how I can get some motion capture units going and um, for the fitness industry. So let's go in, see how he's going. So, here he is, he's over here, like going to give Simon, how you going mate? You again? I thought I told you to never come back down here. Get out of here, never come back. Uh, okay, I'll well, come back to Simon later. So several years ago, I started cutting up an IMU tracker with the express purpose of being able to use it in the gym. It had to keep track of how many sets and reps I did, how quickly I did them, and how much rest I had between sets, how much effort I was expending, and how my form was going. So the hitchhiker was born. It was just assembly with a 9150 IMU attached. I wrapped it up with electrical tape and put a magnet inside so I could easily attach it to a barbell. But I was getting frustrated with the data coming out of it. I had to apply lots of algorithms such as data smoothing, peak detection, predictive analysis and other fuzzy bits to ignore such things as dropping dumbbells on the ground. So I got it to the stage where it was pretty accurate, but it still wasn't good enough. So I took a look at what had progressed in the industry since I last looked. Well, it seems that there's still not any proven technology that helps the weightlifter. But there's some new stuff. For example, there's Push, which is a motion tracker attached to your wrist. Same old, same old. And Atlas have a range of wearables with, once again, IMUs inbuilt. But now we are starting to see things like cable-based trackers, for example, Kinetic. And also Open Barbell. Cool. I can imagine cables would be fairly accurate. So why is IMU technology really useless for weightlifting? There's two fundamental reasons, noise and drift. For this experiment, I used the Kickstarter I backed last year called Perception Neuron. This is a full motion tracking suit that is very accurate, but often requires someone to fix up the data when using it for motion capture in videos. Let's take a fairly basic tracking task, such as running. That actually looks quite good, doesn't it? The red balls appearing at my feet show the current zero point location for height, and the big red ball shows my centre of gravity. Now what about doing some pull-ups? The software will assume that my feet are always touching the ground and will result in some rather bizarre activities. It can fix this up after capturing, but a little pointless for my needs. Deadlifts are fairly easy to capture because my feet are always on the floor. You can see that the capture is pretty good, even though my form is hopeless. Bad form. Naughty form. Taken from another angle, you can see certain parts of my anatomy drifting. For example, my feet were straight doing these deadlifts but my left foot on the capture was pointing in. Doing lat pulldowns was okay. Actually, it was a pretty good capture. And the rowing machine was coming up with a decent capture as well. But leg presses, well, this is where it starts to get a little funky. The software still thinks my feet are firmly on the ground, and all I'm doing is pushing myself into the ground. Can you figure out what I'm doing here? No, not a back flip push-up thingy. It's supposed to be a barbell bench press. This is a great example of where the first problem lies, and it's called drift. IMU drift is caused by the simple fact that each sensor does not have a real-world frame of reference. All they are doing is guessing where they are in the real world based on how much acceleration they experience. This is called dead reckoning. This guesswork becomes even worse when you take into account errors produced by noise, temperature and scaling issues. Common ways of dealing with drift is to apply a frame onto the sensors called an armature. This limits their drift away from other sensors. This is what the perception neuron software does, but as you saw in my examples, it still gets it slightly wrong. Another way of dealing with drift is to have a real-world beacon in the room where the IMU suit can triangulate its main position, and then all the other sensors can either be brought into line using an armature, or have every sensor triangulate or have no sensors and just use cameras instead. This is expensive, still prone to errors, and not particularly portable. 
although new technologies coming from DARPA look promising. The second problem with IMUs is noise. Some of the exercises I did came up with some great captures, like the dumbbell bench fly. Notice I used a different bench. This bench had less metal in it than the previous bench, which had a lot of metal in it. You can see what happens when I do a barbell squat. A big lump of metal placed on my shoulders with a big metal squat rack nearby makes my squats look like a ballet routine. Very dainty. So why is this happening? Well, it's all about magnets. The Earth is one big magnet with a north and a south pole. The IMU suit will make use of this as a crude triangulation method. It's actually fairly accurate, but the magnetic field is so faint that large metal objects will affect the sensor readings. Not only metal objects, but phones, computers, mains power, and anything else that emits electromagnetic waves. In fact, the perception neuron guys are so worried about it that they provide a magnetically shielded case to house the sensors. Going back to my original goal, how can I automate my gym session tracking and gather some performance data? As I showed you earlier, there's some really interesting progress made with cables, but that's a little bit bulky. But there's two other ways I'm thinking of to achieve my goals. Stay tuned next time to find out what they are and how my test results went. Oh, by the way, if you live around the Castle Hill area, check out Simon's gym. Actually, it's not just a gym. They train anyone from beginners to pro athletes. And he's always looking for new ways to train. So, if you're in the area, check it out. So, what do you reckon about this? Hmm? It's a pretty good gym, isn't it? If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like. And if you're not a subscriber, it would be great to see you as one. So, see you next week. 99. Oh, 100. Thank you.